Lessonby Prison? Yes, and I'm looking forward to it. I've never been in a prison before. Well, I dare say, but what about your surgery here? Well, I'm dealing with that, sorry, Jean. No, really, it's fine. It's an arrangement we've always had. We look after the prison when the other practice can't, isn't that so, Lizzie? Uh, yes, Dr. Weatherill. And they help us out sometimes, too. Thank you, Lizzie. Well, in that case, off you go, Dr. Ellis. Enjoy your morning. So, how did it go? Jill, what a place. I know. One of the prisoners seems very disturbed to me, but the medical orderly wasn't having any of it. He more or less said he was putting it on. Well, you know, the staff get very hardened. They've seen it all before, haven't they? Ah, you're back. Yeah, sorry, took longer than I thought. I see. Uh, I'm going to um, suggest that you review this prison business at the next partners' meeting. It does seem a bit much. How do you mean? Well, let the prisoners take priority over our own patients. Well, it depends on need, doesn't it? Not on whose patients they are. Sergeant Fuller. We need to see the hospital administrator. Yes, that's me. Can I help you? I'd rather we spoke somewhere private. <clears throat> oh, 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 Mother. I just need a minute. That's oh, dear. Are you all right? Come and sit down. Gordon, the police are here. What's going on? I have no idea. What's all this about? I'm sorry, Gordon. I had to call Sergeant Fuller. I'm just not happy about my father's death. I beg your pardon? Mrs Plumley and her son don't understand why he uh, passed away so quick. That's the thing. Well, he died of cancer. You knew that. I went home last night thinking that I would see my father again this evening. I kissed him goodbye and, and left. I, I didn't think for a moment that that would be the last time I would see him alive. The death was unexpected, that's his point, Doctor. So what I need to know is why he didn't want to report it to the coroner. Because he was under the care of his own doctor, and as I keep saying, there was no question about the cause of death. Oh, very convenient. There is a question about its speed, though, isn't there? I'm sorry. Mr Plumley thinks you may have, um, administered an overdose. I actually heard you say that's what you would do to father last night. In which case, it's nothing short of murder. This is ridiculous. An overdose, you say? Well, I'm going to scotch that idea straight away. If you'll, um, excuse me for just one minute. This is my entry for yesterday. Ten ampules of diamorphine for Philip Plumley. And then here is my own dangerous drugs book in which I mark off the ampules as I administer them. Philip was on one ampule every six hours. That's three doses in all. One at 10 a.m., another at 4 p.m., and the last at 10 p.m. In which case, the remaining seven ampules must still be in your bag. Yes. Can we see them? Of course. Although it really shouldn't be necessary. Dr. Omarad? It's 50 mils, 50% glucose. Should do the trick. What sent her insulin levels up so high, do you think? Must have made a mistake with her dose. Hardly surprising, given the circumstances. How is she? It's a hypoglycemic coma. We'll need to keep her under observation until her condition stabilises. I see. Uh, perhaps we could give Mrs Plumley a private room? I'll arrange it right away. Dr Weatherall? Sergeant Fuller has had a word with the coroner, and there is going to be a post-mortem. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Five ampules of diamorphine are missing. And if it turns out they've been given to the patient, it's a serious matter. Not just for Gordon, for the whole hospital. I told them! Well? The police have had the post-mortem results on Philip Plumley. And? He died of a massive dose of diamorphine. Uh, I see. How big an overdose? According to reports, about 60 milligrams. 60? No, no, no. That's, that's impossible. Of course it is. I gave him the normal 10 milligram dose. 
Of course you did, but the fact is that accounts for all the ampules. The ones you say you gave him, plus the five missing ones. Uh, hang on a minute, you're surely not suggesting that Gordon did it? No, of course not. If you'll excuse me, please, one minute. Gordon, Sergeant Fuller's on his way, we need... <sighs> well, never mind what actually happened. We are now at the centre of a police inquiry. Gordon would never do a thing like that. Never. The ampules out of Gordon's bag, and when you got home, I, I injected them using one of my own syringes. He asked me to do it, Edgar. He begged me. He wanted to die. How could I refuse him? But it wasn't just your decision. He was mine too. He was my father. Edgar, think. If I'd involved you, we'd have both been implicated. Implicated? Oh my God. Does anyone else know about this? The police are on their way now. I am so sorry. I didn't mean it to be like this. I meant us to both go together. What? You mean your mistake with the insulin was... It wasn't a mistake, Edgar. I knew what the penalty would be for what I'd done. I wanted to save you the shame. Dr. Wetherill saved me. How Smith. Hanging on. Just. Been transferred to the orthopods at Ashfordley. I told them Bullen was mentally disturbed. Oh, what can you do? At least he's now in Thornton Mental Hospital, where he should have been all along, so that's one good thing, but... Oh, Ralph, you did all you could. Just such an eye-opener, Jill, the whole experience. I mean, there must be thousands of men like him in prison. And I walk in full of good intentions and manage to make a mess of treating just one of them. Don't be deft. No? Well, look what happened after I got involved. He half killed a warder, nearly caused a prison riot. And hey, here's Gordon. Mrs Plumley is waiting for you in my office. Oh, Gordon, thank God. I got it all wrong, didn't I? You had just lost your father. I'm sorry. Poor man. If you hadn't asked for an inquest, nobody would have found out what you'd done, would they? Gee, it's been a long time. I'm an ex. I think I'm being followed. I want you to stop seeing her. Listen. 